Today we're going to talk about the Arachnid chip and the programming software that comes with this. So the first thing you want to do when you go to program an Arachnid chip, it's here, it's on our desktop. We're going to show you exactly how to hook it up. I'm just going to play a little video from my desktop. See, just plug it in right there where the switch connects. It's hooked up to your programmer right there. Plugs in your computer and you're good to go. So what we're going to do now that it's hooked up, we're going to open up our software here. Well, the first thing that happens is it goes over and queries the chip to try and figure out what's on the chip. Now this chip that we just plugged into it is empty, so we're going to go ahead and program some tunes into it. The first thing that we're going to notice is that the, the tunes over here for a DAC3, we need to actually change that to a TDE1. It's pretty easy to build up a tune set, so we're going to do it from scratch so you know how to do that. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to clear this layout. We're going to save the cleared layout as the title for what we're going to target. And we're going to go in here to our D TDE1 because that's the chip that we're going to program. I already have a layout here, but let's go ahead and replace that. So the first tune we're going to do, you can click here on the browse for selection to select your first tune. Now the first tune and always the first position needs to be the stock tune. So we're going to choose our stock tune. It's right there. Or alternatively, instead of hitting the browse selection, you can also click control B and it will load the tune for you that way. We're going to go through and make sure that we have all the tunes in the right order. You can see on the array side, on the left hand side, it's a zero base, but the number of the tunes that we're programming here or one base, so it just seemed to make more sense to us to have it be a one, but our software has it as a as a zero. So that's that. So now we have all of our tunes. We just need to go back through and make sure that we have all the tunes in the right order that we want. You can click on each one and down here in this little file info window on the left side you're going to see all the information regarding that tune. So this is going to be the top, the stock tune. It's actually mostly stock. It's supposed to do some blue spooling as well so that you can have stock with blue spooling and it won't set a check engine light for an overboost code. The second position, we have our high idle tune that also has blue spooling built into it. Then our whisper mode tune. Now that's not something you're going to want to build a lot of boost with, but you can and it does boost full. Next to that is our 40 horsepower towing or our tow one tune. Uh, the next one is going to be the 50 horsepower tow 2 tune. A little bit more fueling, a little bit more timing, just uh, a little bit more power. Then we're going to jump up a little bit to power again for our 65 horsepower daily driver tune. This one should be a nice smooth fueling tune. Then from there we're going to jump up to a 100 horsepower performance tune. It's kind of a race slash performance tune. Then from there we're going to go into our beast mode. This one has extreme levels of fueling, extreme timing and very aggressive shift points too. So now that we have our tune set up how, in the order that we want to do that, we're going to go ahead and write them all to the device. So just click this write all button right here. It says it's going to take a while, but we'll go ahead in time to see how long it is. So the first thing it does is it erases what's currently on there, but since the device has already been erased, that part is pretty much skipped. You can see how fast it actually programs it. We already have two of the tunes done. I mean, we wouldn't even been able to select the tune with the other programmers by this time. The Arachnid programmer can accept unencrypted tunes from your library in either the 256K or 224K format, or you can use the tune sets provided by Quadzilla. The tuner will also be available in both 8 positions and 6 positions. And for 6 positions programming, just fill slots 7 and 8 with the number 6 tune. So that's that. That little beep tells us that it actually finished programming. The thing that we want to make sure that we do is go ahead and save the layout because otherwise it's going to save that blank layout in this place. Now if you really wanted to go through here and say you had number four and five messed up, we can just do this. Move selection up, move selection down, and that swaps them back and forth. We don't really want to do that, so we want to swap them back. So we still have the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight right there. And then now that it's been programmed, you can select any one of these levels these tunes over here and on the right hand side you're going to see the device info this is going to tell you where that it programmed it from 
what the original file size is, what the tune version, the summary, all the descriptions. So it's going to give you a lot of information about what was programmed onto that chip. So it's very easy to bring back a customer's chip and to verify what was programmed on that chip. Just plug it in and it'll do it for you. In fact, we can do it again right here. Just hit query device and it goes through and it reads every single chip position. One of the great things about the product is that you can come in later if you have a second chip that you want to program in with the same layout. You can go on here, load the layout. Now that you've had it saved, you can save this TD1 layout, open it up. Here it is right here, and then just hit write. Going to write all of those tunes out to the next chip. Here's another scenario. Say you got a chip from a customer, or you just received a chip, and you want to change one of the tunes on it without erasing the whole device. What you can do is go through, find the tune that you want to erase, load up the tune that you're going to replace it with, then either erase just that selection and write it, or you can even just press write selection, and it will erase that tune and write the new one onto it. All the rest of the tunes will stay the same. You can go through the list and see that they're all what they were before, except for this super secret tune. One more thing I wanted to show you before we let go today is if you have your own special tunes you want to load up. So I'm going to go ahead and load up a, a super special secret tune for the TDE-1. We're going to load it here. If I wanted to save that and keep it secret from other people and be able to distribute that tune, what I can do is I can go in here and edit the file information. I can add on here super secret TDE-1. Well, I guess that's all it is. It is be the super secret. TDE1 tune and add whatever uh, information here in the detailed description. When you want to go ahead and save that video, press save and then erase the .bin extension on it. The program will automatically add a .qdz extension. And when you open up a cat a .qdz file to look at it, try and examine the binary, it's all going to be encoded. So that's going to be only readable by this software here and only be able to be burned on chips. You can't read it back off the chip to see what's on it. So that is one of the security features. So all you tune makers out there can rest assured that your tunes are going to remain safe.